Greetings, my name is Andrew William and today I'm going to be talking about things that you should be considering when you apply to University of Colorado's Advanced Standing DDS program. Before I do that, I want to say I'm grateful, humbled for all the messages, for all the response that I've been getting from my videos. Uh, thank you for that. And in addition to that, I do want to inform that I've been I got an invitation call from NYU's Advanced Standing DDS program from their dental school and I think it's a big honor and I'm humbled and I'm grateful to God and all the friends who are helping me. So that being said, I'm going to move on to University of Colorado and before I start that, let me tell you, this is one of the school I did my most research on and this is the first school I got accepted to. And the reason is because I was able to meet a handful of people who graduated from there and was able to learn from them. And then I went to their visit day, was able to see the university and their setup in, in flesh. And in addition to that, I was able to make some friends up there who were currently studying and who were, uh, I would say, nice enough to tell me more about the institute. Uh, there's webinar on YouTube. You could even search that. Uh, there's stuff on their website. There's stuff on Wikipedia. So you could read more about it. I did when I was preparing for University of Colorado. And the things you want to consider when you're applying is that you should read their website, specifically their core values, mission statement, some part of their history. You should be aware of what the university is standing upon. And I think for any university, their foundation and their core values is one of the most important things. You can read about what they are researching on, what they are investing on as a as an institute, what they are doing as a in their post-grad residencies. You can do that, but let me tell you, all these things, they change over time. With COVID, the research is gonna be switching. With changing times, residencies change, research change, and uh, the focus of an institution change. But if you read their core values, and if you get an idea of what the institution was built upon and what's their core value, you can capture uh, essence uh, that could make you resonate with that institution. After that being said, when you're going to be Googling and reading about University of Colorado's dental school, you're also going to come across Anschul's family. So I would uh, highly encourage you to read about Philip and Fred Anschul's, uh, who they were in Colorado and how they supported the institution and what their foundation is because they are one of the biggest supporter and donor of that institution. Okay, so after that, so you did your research on the school. That's good. That's like a foundation. And if don't try to skip this part. I, I truly encourage if even if this sounds very lame and boring, but trust me, it will help you when you're moving forward. And let me get to the end of the video and like sum all of this up so you would have a better idea. The second thing you want to do after you're done with researching and reading their core values, you want to focus on one thing which their website state clearly is that they prefer a holistic view for admission. What does holistic mean? Holistic means that they do want people who are competent in their dentistry and their skill, but they want people which synchronize as a 360 well-rounded personality who will go along with the institution's core value. So this is where point one and point two meet. And you want to see if you fall into that category and how you could shape yourself or mold yourself into those core values. And I'm gonna to move to the third point where you could understand where I'm taking. So in a holistic view, you want to come off as a person who's well-rounded with his emotional intelligence, with his dental skills and with his awareness and with the ethics and the culture of United States. So we're done with point one, point two, and coming to point number three. The point number three is, I think one of the, one of the most important things to getting into Colorado, uh, interview, like to get to the interview is your personal statement or your statement of purpose, whatever you want to call it, SOP. Why? Because University of Colorado is one of the few institutions which requires from the candidate to write a separate 
SOP and upload it on their on the portal. Why do they do that? Because they want to write a shorter one. I think approximately of 3,500 character rather than uh, what is required by a CAPID, a DIA CAPID and most institution. So trust me, this is this is not like a random thing they are making you do. They have planned this on purpose and they want the candidate to not to give them cliche kind of personal statement which they already have written and sent out to 20 or 30 schools. They want you to treat them separately as compared to other schools. And that's one of the reasons. There might be other reasons you can interpret in, in your own ways, but this is one of the reasons. And when you write down or you have to make your uh, SOP into a smaller, a shorter, uh, I would say, write up, uh, you want to focus on the core values that I was talking about in point one. So you want to utilize those core values, those statements, what the college and what the Anshul Foundation stand for. And then you use that holistic view and then you utilize that into writing in your SOP and make it sound a well-rounded person. And do not mistake me for saying that you don't have to be a competent doctor. You have to be a competent dentist. You have to show you're a very competent dentist who's into dentistry, but you have more in life than dentistry. Like you're also a good human being. And I don't want to drag the video, but uh, let me tell you something that most of these dental schools, even if I remember from Pakistan, most of them are located in low socioeconomic status area in population which are underprivileged. And the reason these schools are made in those places is because they want to serve people. And in return, what do they get? They get a high patient pool for their doctors. So it's a give and take. But Schools want people, like especially like University of Colorado, who are more acceptable of working with underprivileged people. They don't want somebody who's really high on IQ but low on EQ and couldn't manage himself in a diverse kind of, uh, I would say, low socioeconomic strata. So that's something they are trying to do through this process. They are trying to separate the wheat from the chaff. That's how I would put it up. And once you write down that, <clears throat> you're done with your recipe, you need to know one thing that is highly important. You want to get your LORs, your letter of recommendation, sealed in hard copies by your evaluators or referee, whoever the person who's writing your LOR, ask him to seal this, <clears throat> to seal it in an envelope and send it directly to the institution. And I'm uh, guilty of this mistake. I asked them to send it over to me and then I send it forward. Yes, I have to sign a waiver to do that. But preferably it's better if you may ask your recommenders to send it directly. So two things about LOS that you want to consider. One of them, uh, I will tell you briefly. One of the things is that you want to Keep your LOAs diverse in their content and in their, uh, I would say, format. Do not have the same thing being written in each of them. Like, for example, this person is competent, he's flexible, he's adaptable, he's a very nice human being. Do not say the same stuff in all three of them. Have it diverse and different in, in, in its content. Maybe I can go into detail in some other video about it. And the second thing you want to be sure about that your SOP, statement of purpose, your LOAs and your resume all are in aligned to one purpose. For example, just to keep it short, in my scenario, I always wanted to say, uh, if you select me as a candidate or if you bet on me, I will strive to improve my life and also the life of people around me. So this was kind of like my purpose or my goal or my central foundation. And I wrote down my SOP or my LOAs from people who will back this idea or who will say, yes, this is a kind of a person who will do that. And even in my resume, my activities or the stuff I've done done, and the type of institutions or activity or the type of uh, organizations that I work with align with this kind of uh, thought process. 
So once you're done with your LORs and you sent your application and you submitted everything, one of the most important thing while you while you're doing this, one of the most important thing that I want to tell you and I experienced firsthand is that you want to send your application and paperwork as early as possible. Yes, as early as possible, because in my case, I got a couple of things delayed and trust me, it's chaos getting things done on the last day. I would highly encourage you to get your things done on, on as early as possible. Make sure, especially in time of COVID, send everything, be prepared, be on top of your game. So once you send that, you, you're done with your application, you sent your LOR, everything have been accepted up there. What you want to do is be wise with your time. I usually say, learn from the ant. They are never sluggard or lazy. The wise is the one who prepare for war in time of peace. So if you have time, start preparing on your psychomotor skills, start working on your bench test. And in addition to that, start learning how to communicate in United States, start watching meaningful YouTube content, start talking to people and build yourself in a way that you can hold a meaningful conversation with another pers person and you can practice it. You can learn a lot on the media. You can take professional help, whatever you want, whatever works for you. But the best thing you want to do during that time is work on both of these side by side. That's that's one of the best advice I could give you uh, regarding that time. And during that time, you do want to stay in contact with the school, but do not be annoying. I repeat, do not send stuff which is annoying. Like try to be wise with your conversation and words. It should be short and meaningful. And that's how you want to communicate with anybody pretty much, not just the school, because that is what keeps your respect by the end of the day. So once you're done with that, I would say be positive, be be positive and be prepared and do not worry or stress too much. Get your things done, but do not overstress in your life. And um, I would say I'm willing to help a handful of people for the process of University of Colorado, specifically for their SOP or for the interview or for their LOAs. But I'm going to keep it exclusive because since I make I started making these videos, uh, my routine has been overwhelming. I'm trying to manage a lot of things at one time and uh, I'm willing to assist people who need help. But uh, I will try to keep it exclusive. But I genuinely hope that my video, what I made is is helpful. And my biggest thing would be like I would really uh, I would be the happiest person is after watching this video, you could raise the bar like seriously learn from this, make your application even stronger, even better than what I did. And if you could raise the bar, that would be the best thing I could hear. And uh, I would say best of luck. And hopefully I will come up with the next uh, meaningful video. Thank you.